Okay, hey guys. Um, so I'm gonna just go through this 45-minute video. I haven't, I haven't watched it yet. I'm just Welcome back to Channel Water. Today I want to continue talking about my personal journey into water and mainly about the identity. What does it mean to have this identity of water? Or in a way, the way I see it is not having an identity. So um, let me dive into that and explain that further. All human beings are born into a certain equation. So when you're born, you're told that you belong to a certain family, city, nation, nationality, religion, cult, anything. It could be very spiritual, it could be very rigid, you can be born in a dictatorship, you're given a gender, a name, even a number for the country you belong to, a passport. We're given so many things that basically describe who we are and what we are. And that fits to the equation of human beings in this material world. There is a certain order, and order is good. It's what we need to work within that specific equation. A lot of times we forget the bigger picture and we get too attached to that order and we take it to a place that is not positive anymore, to a place where it starts conflicting. It starts conflicting ourselves, within ourselves. So when I walk in the world, I don't see anything as a separate entity from me. Everything that I look at is a version of myself it's part of myself in a different vessel, in a different vehicle, in a different timeline, in a different body. So whether it's a plant, animal, person, or even a cloud, that is just a different form of myself. But with the identity we're born into, that whole package of your vehicle, Sometimes we lose that knowledge and we forget that. There is a purpose to that when it comes to helping us moving forward as a society and build the architecture that we need to build. So there is competition and there is a ways to motivate us or the whole nature, even plants have motivation, animals, to motivate you to grow because that's what nature does. It grows. And that growth is moving water into architecture more plants, more animal, more people, more housing. We're moving forward into architecture. So there is a sense of positive side to competition, positive side to motivation, but then we also see the negative side of it. When we get too attached to the illusion of the identity and we start fighting with each other, we start destroying and we forget who we really are. So we lose our grace, we lose the love, we develop a lot of judgment, and it's really about forgetting. We forget who we are, we believe the story, we believe the illusion, and we take it too far. In my personal experience, I was born in a small country, and uh, it's a small country that's also surrounded by enemies, so it's like an island, we're landlocked. And then we're born into a very specific identity of the idea of being Jewish. And it's a very, it, it creates a very strong sense of identity. Again, that capsule that you're born into, specifically over there, is very strong. The smaller it is, the stronger it is, too. So it was even harder breaking out of that and seeing the connection between yourself and the bigger picture of humanity to see the greater connections between all of us and eliminating separation, basically taking away anything that separates me from you. So the idea that I'm from a certain country and you're from another country, that separation. The idea that I belong to a certain religion, um, to a certain gender, sex. There's so many things that we have that separate us from others. And, like I said, some separation is positive in the sense of creating order, but there's certain separation that starts pushing you away from the greater picture of humanity and the greater consciousness in that sense. So, I worked very hard to 
walk away and shedding off any layer of separation and also questioning what does it mean. So, for example, what does it mean to be Jewish? For me, other than saying I'm different than you, it didn't mean anything. So, there's certain traditions, there's stories, there's certain beliefs, but if you truly believe that all humanity is one big body and we all have the same connection to whatever the source is, the greater consciousness, then I don't see any reason for me to say that I'm different from you. So, for me to say that I am something that you are not doesn't serve my purpose in life, doesn't serve my connection to you. There is absolutely nothing that is different between me and you. Absolutely nothing. There's nothing special about me, different of you. We're exactly the same. Not only that, we are the same body, we are the same identity, we are the same consciousness in different vessels and vehicles. So, taking off those layers and also dealing with the environment, which usually has a hard time with that, because that's their identity. And whenever you try to move away or question identity, you usually get a lot of backlash and you get a lot of judgment and people start questioning you. But for me, it was important to stay strong in my journey and not let any of those things set me back and always freeing myself further and further from anything that was basically there to hold me back and separate me from the rest. Anytime that there was something that created separation, I just moved it away, stepped away from it, and always stepped closer to you, always stepped closer to a place where we are the same. We are on the same level. We are equals. We had different experiences in life. We have different outcomes. That's what creates our personality, is that accumulation of experiences since we were born until now. So, there are differences. There are differences in ability, because we have different vehicles, but there's no difference in dignity and in the respect and the equality that we all deserve to have. So, it's a very tricky situation we're talking about where we need to identify the differences between our vehicles, but also acknowledge the similarity and the equality and the dignity we all have from being the same consciousness in those different vehicles. So that difficulty brought me to a place where water was a way to verbalize and explain something that was so beyond words, but water was the one thing that can, in this physical world, represent that eternal, timeless, equal soul, consciousness that we all have. And more than that, it's in our body. We have it. It's actually, this whole body is just a shell. It's a bag of water with bones and structure and architecture. But the water in me and the water in you is the same. Water is timeless. It has no gender, it has no sex, it has no identity other than itself, the thing that it is and never changes. It has no form, it has no age. It's just the perfect example. As we look at the cycle of water through nature, as it flows through plants, into animals, into people, back to the ground, back to the river, back to the ocean, back to the clouds, to the rain. The cycle of water is the cycle of the soul as we describe it. As we describe when we die and leave this body, we go back to the ocean. That ocean of where all the people that passed away and the people that have not been born yet, that is a real place in the ocean, in the rivers, in the clouds. So we can see how we can use water as a symbol, even if it's not the thing itself, it doesn't matter. It's a way to see that your body, the differences between you and me, 
or just architecture. Your skin color, my skin color, your gender, sex, anything that is physical and as far as appearance is architecture. It's a building. So I won't judge you by your car, by your house, or by your body. Your ability will be different than mine because we don't have the same bodies. There's a full spectrum of what bodies and vehicles were born into because there's a full spectrum of work we need to do. 